the year is 20XX and I am currently in the Thai seaside town of Patea. I am still on my adventures travelling around the world and I thought today would be as good a day as any to take a trip to the beach and indulge in a little bit more handheld goodness. We are back on the subject once more of the Neo Geo Pocket Color. I talked all about this system's history and playability in the last video on this channel. If you watched that one you would have learned that it was a good little handheld but unfortunately it didn't sell too well and ended up being discontinued pretty quickly. Something of note though is that the Japanese market existed a bit longer than both the North American and European markets so we therefore saw a few more games released at the end of the system's lifespan exclusive to that region. One of the best in which we saw was published by Capcom. It is also of note that they allowed the production of the amazing Match of the Millennium game in which I talked about before on this channel. Anyway, the Capcom game I speak of is actually a Mega Man compilation game named Rockman Battle and Fighters. But before we get to that, I think we are getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to the beginning. Rockman Battle and Fighters is a game based off of another two obscure Mega Man Japanese arcade games that never saw Western releases. These arcade games were based on the Street Fighter 2 hardware and were individually named Rockman The Power Battles and Rockman The Power Fighters. Obviously, unlike traditional Mega Man side-scrollers, these are both fighting games. These games do not play like traditional fighters and are instead both expanded versions of the Mega Man boss encounters from the previous games. Now let's take a look at each of these three games. Rockman The Power Battle, released in Japanese arcades in 1995, eventually saw a release in North America as Mega Man The Power Battle in 2004. This game was included as part of the Mega Man Anniversary Collection for the PlayStation 2, Nintendo GameCube and Xbox. Sadly, we never got this compilation disc in Europe, as for some reason not many people seem to give a crap about Mega Man where I am from. The story of the game is the same as ever. It takes the usual simplistic approach. Basically, the evil Dr. Wily has rebuilt some of these robot masters, with which he is trying to take over the world, forcing the heroes to stop him. The game allows the player to choose between three playable characters. Mega Man, Proto Man and Bass. Two players can also play the game simultaneously as different characters and team up to defeat the bosses. The game plays similarly to the main Mega Man games. The player uses one button to jump and one to fire the character's arm-mounted energy weapon. Holding the fire button charges the weapon in order to release a stronger blast. Holding down while pressing the jump button makes the characters perform a dash, the appearance of which varies between characters. After selecting a character, the player chooses between three stories, with each one having different robot masters from various games. The stories are Mega Man 1 to 2, 3 to 6 and Mega Man 7. Upon choosing a story, the game quickly pans through the various levels letting the player choose one roulette style. As mentioned previously, the levels are largely different from the mainstream Mega Man games. Instead of going through an entire stage and fighting the Robot Master as a boss at the end, the player faces the Robot Master immediately. Defeating the Robot Master earns the player their weapon, which can be switched to by pressing a button. Like in most Mega Man games, each Robot Master is weak to another one's weapon, so the player can fight through them in a rock, paper, scissors style fashion. When you eventually beat the game, each character even has their own epilogue to see. The great music we expect from Mega Man games is all back in this one. The soundtrack contains arranged pieces from previous Mega Man games by Setsuo Yamamoto and Hideki Okawacha. I can't pronounce that name, it's too Japanese. The soundtrack actually saw a Japanese release on December 1st, 1995 by Sony Records. The sequel to this game, Mega Man 2 The Power Fighters, known in Japan as Rockman The Power Fighters, saw a release in Japan in 1996 and the game was included as part of that compilation disc in North America in 2004. Like in the previous game, The Power Battle, each character has an epilogue once the player beats the game. However, in The Power Fighters, the epilogues are more detailed and have more to do with the past and future Mega Man games, providing vague explanations regarding characters and canon. Most notably, the evil energy incident from Mega Man 8, and how Dr. Wily created Zero from the Mega Man X series. The gameplay is roughly the same as in Mega Man The Power Battle, as it keeps the controls, stages and weapon copying. There are, however, several new additions. The playable characters are Mega Man, Proto Man, Bass and Duo, with Duo being a new addition to the cast. 
The four characters feature different attributes and abilities. When playing with two players, only one player can get the Robot Master's weapon. Like in the power battle, there are three stories to choose from. All of these stories have different Robot Masters to fight, and halfway through the player is given a different power-up. Unlike the previous game, the Power Fighters lets the player choose freely between Robot Master stages, and is given some hints on what the Robot Master's weaknesses are. Each of the characters can perform a special attack which is executed by releasing a full buster charge while holding the joystick up. Mega Man's special move, the Mega Upper, is a jumping uppercut, kind of like the Shreyukun. Proto Man's special move, the Proto Strike, allows him to shoot a short-ranged massive burst of energy. Basis special move, the Crescent Kick, lets him perform a somersaulting kick. Duo special move, the Giant Knuckle, is a standard uppercut that flings the enemy upwards. If the attack button is pressed again after the uppercut, Duo will jump and slam the enemy down into the ground. Yeah! As the player damages the Robot Masters, various energy pellets come out of them. Some of these are for points, whilst others will restore health, weapon energy or both. When the Robot Master is defeated, a multitude of these pellets are released, as well as a capsule, similar to those seen in Mega Man 8, containing the boss's special weapon. During a two-player game, only the players who pick up the capsules will get the special weapon. One of the items that can appear during battles will summon a Robot Helper. Mega Man summons Rush, Base summons Treble, Proto Man and Duo both summon Base. These summoning abilities will last until their energy runs out, and they cannot be cancelled. Lastly, each Robot Master now also has an overdrive mode. After a Robot Master loses half or more of their health, the screen will go dark, they will flash, and their attack patterns will change. Some Robot Masters will gain new moves, some will gain new weapons, and others will become more difficult to hit. Now finally, let us look at Rockman Battle and Fighters for the Neo Geo Pocket Color. This game features complete conversions of both of these arcade games and offers all four playable characters. It also includes dozens of bosses and special weapons and even offers link cable support and is even compatible with both colour and monochrome versions of the Neo Geo Pocket systems. In this handheld version of the fighter, the game uses the same basic gameplay engine. Once again, you can dash left or right, jump into the air, or fire your weapon. You must learn each boss's attack patterns, dodge his projectiles, and exploit his weaknesses. The game has been nicely scaled down for the handheld, and really takes advantage of the Neo Geo Pocket Color's graphical capabilities. The animation quality is great, and the backgrounds have a lovely look to them. Musically, the game features the same quality sounds you would expect from a Mega Man game. Nothing really to report here, but nothing to complain about either. I have not tried it out myself yet, but apparently the link cable support for this game isn't too solid. After clearing different courses, you unlock a robot database that gives information on your enemies. It's possible to link up to another Neo Geo Pocket Color unit and give this database info to a friend. But there's no one-on-one -on -one battling between clients here, which to me is a ridiculous opportunity to miss. What's with all this pointless data transfer with Neo Geo Pocket Games? What a rubbish gimmick! I just don't get it! Overall, these three games are a fresh take on the fighting game genre and provide a nice diversion from SNK's large lineup of similar brawlers. These games are worth a playthrough, whether you're a fan of fighters or just the Mega Man series in general. This is a great little series of obscure games, and really highlights how fun the boss encounters can be within the Mega Man series. The Neo Geo Pocket Color only had a small library of games, so the handheld iteration of this Mega Man fighting game is definitely one of the games you would want to add to your collection. Thank you for watching today's video. It's always fun to cover underappreciated handheld games on underappreciated systems whilst travelling around the world. Shout outs to Jarrett Tolzian, Mad Ape Productions, Andreas Larson, Peter Sedorn, Mike Frost, Edward O'Reilly, and all of my other patrons. Thank you all for your support. Yeah! If you want to be added to this prestigious list, then check out my Patreon page. Ta ta and farewell.